Welcome back to the plot everyone. It's a it's a very sunny day here in next town. Um and there's a lot to do today. Everything must go into the ground. So I've, I'm slowly bringing up all the the plants from home, all the seedlings, and I'm putting them into the ground. But I've just come up and had a look at under my brass net and I can see signs of slug damage. So I'm going to tackle that first. I'm going to take the net up, remove any damaged leaves, take out any weeds, any dead leaves which can give slugs any cover, they're going to come out and I am going to put down some more blue pellets and a beer trap. So that's what I'm going to do first because um, the brassicas are really doing well under these nets. Uh, the birds haven't got them. In fact, if you hang on, I'll give you a quick, sh I'll show you. Well, as you can probably see the telltale silver trail of the slugs or snails, it could be snails. And as you can see, that leaf has completely disappeared. That one's been damaged as well. Uh, so I'm going to get the net up, get rid of all this bindweed that's creeping in, and take, hopefully not leave any hiding places. As you can see again, that leaf's been damaged. You can see the silver trail on it. So we're going to get them done. Underneath that net, doesn't look too bad. I can't see possibly that leaf down there. But apart from that, I can't see any major damage. Oh, there's some on that leaf there, and I can see a silver trail. So, yeah, I'll do, I'll do both of these. Plus, I want to get everything into the ground. I'll show you what I've got. I've got a few more brassicas. Um, and I've got some more pat choy, which needs to go into the ground. These are purple sprouting broccoli and all year round cauliflowers. Ones in the square tubs are collies, ones in the round are broccoli. These are my parsnips. I put parsnips in the ground, but they didn't take. Uh, even though they were chitted seeds, they, weren't, they went in there and they didn't take. So I chitted some more seeds and I put them in root trainers. And I've got about 14 or 15 here, but as you can see, this one's just coming up, whereas this one's been up for a couple of weeks now. So a bit of sporadic growth even in the root trainers. But uh, yeah, I want to get them in the ground as soon as possible because the tap root might get damaged just being in the root trainer. So garlic's coming out. The bloody beans are over there at the minute, but they're going to go in where the garlic is. Uh, parsnips are going to go in. Uh, but I'll weed in. I've brought the strimmer up, so I'll, I'll see if I can. If I've, if I've got time, I'm going to strim. I want to put some environmesh around those carrots. Get some of these in the ground, and sort out the brassica bed. So yeah, that's a a busy wee, a busy day today. So I best get on with it. Okay, so just when I thought I was getting on top of the slug, slug problem, this is the line where I put the Lola Rossa lettuce last week. There is one at the far end, and if you look down here, you can see the silver trails of the slugs. Now some of this damage is done by birds pecking, like here, that's pecking by birds. But if I look down here, this is where I put four Swedes last week. There's one there, there's that one. There should be one around, oh there's one there. And well, they're all, they've, they've all gone. So I'm going to need to fill up the beer traps again and I'm also going to need to net over this again uh, the perpetual spinach has started to produce flower heads so I'm going to pull them off see if I can uh, 
ward off the plant going to seed too quickly. I'm actually going to take some of that, we're going to use some of that during the week. This chard's looking nice, but this one has, has gone to seed the flower heads. Now this, this is lamb's lettuce, and I'm wondering why it's covered in the earth. I wonder what's made these imprints here and here. It looks like something's walked through here. This is a, a radish, small, virtually nothing there. So yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to put the, the nets back on here. Let's have a look at the squash. This squash is doing okay, it's screwing another bit. Uh, this Swiss chard has gone to seed. And there's a lot of uh, Swiss chard got black fly as well. Right, so I've got a, a bird problem and a slug problem. So, more blue pellets, I'm afraid. Beer in the beer traps. I've got one can of the cheap beer in the shed. I'm going shopping later today, so I'll pick up some more. Peas, peas are doing well. And, uh, they're beginning to fill up now. So everywhere I look on this plant, there's just peas. So that's good. So uh, yeah, after the nematodes and the beers, it looks like we've still got a bit of a slug problem. But it's such a big site, when you're never going to eradicate all the slugs and snails. Well, here's the output from the leeks. We've got some really good sized leeks. I can't remember the variety of this, but I'll, I'll print it on the screen when I get home, when I make this video. So we've got some really nice ones. These are a different variety. These are all just pure white. They, they might be solent white. I can't remember why I've got just three of these and the rest are all these purple tinge ones. But these are the decent sized ones. Oh, we've got some small ones as well. A um, couple of small ones as well. These will still get used. Um, the whole thing will go in. When you're digging up, when you're harvesting leeks, always dig up underneath them and dig them out of the ground. Don't be tempted to just grab the leaves and pull them out of the ground because what you end up doing is you end up ripping the roots off of the basal plate of the leek and that will leave an avenue for bacteria or mould to get in and destroy the bulb. So always dig up from underneath. Then these are going to go home and these will be hung upside down uh, to dry out. All the liquid will dry out the neck. Once the necks are dry, uh, I will cut the top and get rid of most of the roots uh, before I store them. The reason for having the neck dry out is because if the neck is still uh, wet, say greenish and wet, it, you can get mould for if you cut it down there. Then you've got this wet bit of neck here and you can get mould coming down into the bulb and destroying it. So you wait till all this dries out and it's paper dry then you just cut it and it should be fine. But these yeah, yeah, it's not bad, not bad. Uh, right now, I could kill some garlic bread because they smell gorgeous. All I can smell is garlic. 
but they'll be going home tonight to uh, dry out. Well, this is where I've put all the chilli and pepper plants. Um, this is to give them some protection from the wind. And the cold weather, as well, it's not very warm today, but it'll give them some protection. Uh, and it'll be a much better environment for them being in the ground where there's a bigger reservoir of water. And these are the ones that I'm growing in for competition with my sister. Uh, and as you can see, it's beginning to get some flowers on it now. So all these, f those three and those two, are the gourmet chilies. They're from three-year-old dried chilies that I got in uh, Malaysia with a friend gourmet. This one's a frigatello. And these ones here are King of the North and Corno di Toro Rossa, which is the one shaped like a red bull's horn. Uh, this is polythene from the old cover that used to be on the little greenhouse. It got split at the back. So I've just kept it to use for, I don't know, patching or something. But I thought I could use it for this. And this is just two old bits of perspex that have always been down the side of a shed that I've kept thinking, well, I might want to use them sometime. So, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully these will start to perk up because some of them are not looking very good. I've also put some uh, uh, slug pellets in because uh, I have noticed there's a lot of slugs come along the side of this this container. It means I've got one less place to have carrots this year, but uh, we'll try it. We'll try it with the chilies instead. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, everyone, it's the 30th of June, so I thought I'd do a quick end of the month tour around the plot, show you what's happening, show you what's growing, show you what's not. So uh, let's go around and do this now. Well, in the plastic bed, the cabbages are doing well, apart from some slug damage, as you can see there. And there's been a bit of slug damage 
on a few of the few of the things. But I've put down some more plus slug pellets. Um, it doesn't help that this netting is now touching uh, the leaves of the brassicas. So I might actually get some more of the blue piping and do a bigger net. The, the, the smaller net, the smaller bars are really more suited for um, lettuce, I would imagine, or something like that. And there is a snail just in there in the middle of the screen. So I'll see if I can get him out before I finish. This is purple sprouting broccoli. Oh, there's some cauliflower in that one there. Uh, there's some cauliflowers and some kale. And here I've got some purple sprouting broccoli. Uh, still getting slug damage. Um, and there's some... I think these are a mixture of cauliflowers and kale again. So they're all varied stages of uh, development. But uh, as you can see, there's blue slug pellets down to see if I can combat the damage that the slugs are doing. Uh, on this bed, uh, I've had to put the net back over again. As you can see that. As we're getting some bird damage as well as slug damage. I've filled these beer traps back up with beer and last night and I uh, managed to catch quite a few slugs and all. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some more at the weekend and refill them all again. This is one of the uh, winter squashes. This is a Crown Prince squash. And I'm trying to get it to go out that way and down the path. So it seems okay, it seems to be doing well. Next to that we've got some lamb's leaf lettuce, which will be used for cut and come again salad. That's a uh, Swiss chard that's gone to seed. Uh, which I might pull the leaves off and give them to the rabbits at home. And this one we've got that one's a beetroot. And the rest of Swiss chard. That's a single rocket. I did have some Lolo Rossa um, lettuces here, but they've all been chewed to the ground. I've got that tiny little one left at the far end. These other lettuces have been chewed a little bit. These are supposed to be little gems, I think. There was a line of in fact, that was the second line of Pat Choi in there, and that's all that's left. This here's the perpetual spinach, which we had some of this tonight in a, a nice Chinese dish, which is quite good actually. And we've got some more little spinaches, not spinaches, beetroots here at the back, um, and a few little weeds. Uh, I've planted some more spinaches, uh, not spinaches, I've planted some more beetroots at home so hopefully by the time these are ready the other spinaches will be ready, the other beetroots will be ready to go in the ground. Uh, that's another slug trap. Moving on to the pea bed. As you can see loads of peas, they're everywhere, they're everywhere in this bed and I've got loads of them. Lots and lots of peas. Let's see if I can find one that's ready. Try loading. This one's a little bit fat. Still a bit immature, but we'll give them a try anyway. See what they taste like. Incredibly sweet. I think they need another couple of weeks. Although I'll try this one, looks a bit fat, and I'll try this one.
Now yet again they're still a bit immature, they need to swell up a bit. The recent rain we've had recently will be doing them wonders. Um, it's also saving me how to um, come round and water everything. But uh, excuse me while I just try these out. They are really, really nice. I don't know whether you can see along there, but they're all just hanging down. And on this one, they're, so we're going to get a good crop of peas. This is my tomatoes, this is my Alicante tomatoes. As you can see, most of them have got flowers on now and this one's got a little tomato. So we're going to have a, at least one tomato, hopefully. Um, Hopefully a few tomatoes, but these are the Alicante heirloom variety. I need to get some more bamboo canes in. I think I've got some more in my second shed there. So I'll get them in. This was one of my squashes. Now this was the one I first planted, but looking at the stem it doesn't look as if it's... It looks like the stem's been pinched. Um, it hasn't really grown much since I've put it there, not as much as the other one, but I'll leave it there and see how it goes. Uh, there's nothing else I can do with it anyway, um, but we'll leave it and see how it grows. Now these are my chilies and sweet peppers. These are all looking good. But I came up last night and they were covered, well some of them were covered in uh, snail traps as you can see this has all been chewed out at the top this was a little pepper that was on here which was chewed off this one is um, king of the north so uh, I've put more blue um, slug pellets in here and as you can see there's one of the little devils now using my hands, I don't like the slimy touch of them. Let's get a glove on and see if we can get rid of this guy. Or a woman, whatever it is. Maybe a female slug. But it's not staying there. So there he is. And he's gone over the wall. So that's how I do when the slugs are catch. I throw them over the wall and they get a second chance at life on the other side of the wall. These are my gourmet chilies, which are getting some flowers on. This one had some flowers on, but the tops have been chewed off by slugs, uh, which is really, really annoying. They seem to go for the tops for some reason. Uh, I've also got a bit of an ant problem down here. I don't know whether you can see that. Mr. Red Ant. Um, I don't like the ants either because they bite me in a quick battle too. So, uh, yeah, the chilies, if they could just get a chance away from the slugs, then they'd be doing alright. Rhubarb, more slug damage. We've had some pickings off this uh, rhubarb, and I will be taking some more. I'll take some more of them at the weekend. Uh, now this is, this was the carrots and I came up during the week and there was only a couple round about here. There was carrots all the way down each line. I'm sure in an earlier video I've seen that. But I came up at the weekend and there was only a couple there and a couple there. Then I came up last night and even they had disappeared. So I've put more carrot seed in. I'm going to get some copper tape and put it round the base of this uh, raised bed and see if that, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it's slugs or snails, I don't know what it is. I've put the netting up to stop the birds landing in it, but um, yeah, all my little carrot things are gone. This is uh, potatoes in uh, straw. Uh, I seem to have two. I've also got some collies and bubble sprouting broccoli which I'm going to put in beside the parsnips 
Uh, these are pak choy I put here just to, so I didn't put them on the ground and as you can see it looks like a bird so I've had a go at them so I'm going to put them somewhere else tonight um, the problem is if I've put them on the ground and underneath the netting away from the bird when I come back to them and I lift the thing the, pot, the thing up the pot up, the container, whatever it is there's slugs underneath it and they just crawl up when you're not looking and chew away the vegetables. This is a volunteer potato I found in my compost uh, from last year. It's a little one that I forgot to pull out. Well, I missed last year when I was emptying my potatoes. These are my second goat parsnips. Uh, so I put these in last night and I've put more slug pellets around them. I mean, this year's going to cost me a fortune in slug deterrents. I also put some beer in the beer traps. Uh, but they seem to have hung on. Even this little one here, which has just got its seed leaves. Over there in the corner, all that junk's going to get moved, and I'm going to put the cauliflower and the uh, purple sprouting broccoli along there. I've grown brassicas there before and they don't seem to mind being in the shade for part of the day so I'm going to give them a try there oh, I'm running out of places to put things um, so we'll try them there potatoes, potatoes are doing okay except this one looks a bit sickly compared to the others the leaves are curled up a bit and there's some yellow on, on the leaves plate? no it's not plate um, there's something that's nibbled it um, probably slugs snails so I'll leave it it's still a bit early to pull these up but the rest of them are doing okay this bed strawberries are not doing okay we've got a couple of little ones I think uh, when I left them out and forgot to put them in the ground I don't know whether they got damaged but they certainly didn't like it there is a few strawberries on there but they're not going to amount too much uh, I think I might take the strawberries out and get new ones next year. This is another butternut, not butternut squash, this is a winter squash and that could be my first squash there. So that could be the first one of these squashes. This side I planted some calendula and some sweet peas. The calendula is starting to come out now and there's a actual flower but in there, nothing in that one, nothing in that one, and I've got a couple of sweet peas. Now, the sweet peas were a bit of a dead loss, but I'm hoping I can get enough so I can save some seed and plant some next year. Uh, blueberries are doing their thing, and that's one of the first blueberries. And if you look on this one, we've got some more and some more. So we're going to have some blueberries. Everything over this side, if you look at it, it's all got bindweed coming off the top. As you can see here and here. And it's, it's just a nightmare. It's just... It, it just comes through and just wraps around everything. And you have to be careful ripping it off because if you rip it off and... Because it's spiralled round everything, if you just pull it, what you end up doing is you end up shredding all the leaves and the berries of the plant as well and you're left with a stick. Same here with the raspberries and that small bindweed there. And I uh, don't know whether you can see that very well. You see how it's wrapped round and wrapped round. But we do have some raspberries coming through and, yeah, and we have Mr B there pollinating one of the first flowers where are you stay still he's gone but anyway one of the first raspberry flowers actually in saying that we've got quite a few over here these were a success last year so I'm hoping we have success this year do we have anything on this tree 
and I don't think so. We did have a couple of small ones but it looks like they've dropped off with most of the leaves. Shame not. This is the Himalayan honeysuckle and apparently you can eat these berries, they're supposed to taste a bit like caramel. Um, very nice little lantern shaped flowers, don't know what he is. But uh, yeah, this was here when I took over the plot. It's quite a big tree, I mean I actually had to think about cutting it back a bit, stop it, um, overtaking everything. These are my first yellow potatoes and as you can see we've got some slug damage on here. I don't know what the potatoes are going to be like inside but I'm going to dig all these up at the weekend uh, assuming the weather's okay at the weekend. I have been strimming it. I've just strimmed all over two thirds of this plot. I just never got a run out of batteries at this weekend to do this bit. But I also have to do my corner of shame. There is nothing in the little greenhouse at the moment. We do have some green gauges on the tree. Hopefully they'll increase in size. Uh, these are gooseberries and bindweed. Oh, there's tons and tons of bindweed on this. As you can see, oh, that's just bindweed. But some decent sized gooseberries this year. They were very tiny last year. So uh, I'll do this bed at the weekend. See these ones are very small. Not nearly as big as the ones in that other one. And they've all had about the same amount of water. Um, but I'll come up at the weekend and I'll have a go at weeding this. Give them a feed. In fact, I'll give all the fruit and stuff a feed at the weekend. That's a good idea. Uh, this is another gooseberry bush. But they're quite small again in the, on this one. Any bigger on, lower down. Um, still small, but... We'll have a go at them. These are my bush tomatoes. These are called red pear. And they're a very, very nice little miniature red pear shaped. And they're really, really nice fruity flavour. I grew them last year and I grew one plant last year. And I didn't get a lot of crop off it. So I'm hoping for better things this year. So that's why I've planted three. three this is a calendula, which is finally coming out. Uh, over here, I've got these are uh, borlotti beans. So this is where the garlic was. I took the garlic out the weekend, and I've put the borlotti beans on. These will take a couple of days to finally wrap round and find their way. Don't know what's happened to that one. I don't know whether that's slug damage or what. Um, I'll put down some pellets before I go today. The onions, not doing great. As you can see, they've got the flower spikes on. Some of them have got the flower spikes. Just nip that off. See if they'll grow for a bit longer. But um, yeah, quite a disappointment compared to what we harvested last year. We had really, really bumper crop last year. Really massive um, onions, but not so, not so good this year. These are my purple French climbing beans. These have been in about 10 days now, and they're beginning to all wrap around the poles and find their own way up. So yeah, they're doing well, and they're, they're quite fast. And once they, once they get started and they start flowering, um, they're really, really, uh, prolific, you get quite a lot. So I, th I think that's everything. That bed up there is where I'm going to put my leeks. That one up there. So the leeks are going in there. All this is going to get chopped back. Uh, 
I know I keep saying it all the time, um, but I don't know, I have to keep it back so it doesn't encroach on this bed. Uh, it's quite difficult working on this side of the bed when you've got bramble nettles and thistles and all sorts of things jag jagging you in the backside. But I think that's everything. Uh, the gladioli still doing okay, but still no flowers. I'm not bothered. Uh, you know, it'd be nice if they did flower, but if they don't, then it doesn't matter. It's something nice to look at. But that's everything. That's it on the 30th of June. So, at the weekend, things to do, as you can see, this end's been strimmed quite a bit compared to the other side. At the weekend, strim over there, chop back all that at the back, just see if I can get it back to the fence. I'm not even going to bother about trying to get it out of the roots, just get it back to the fence to make it more manageable. Um, cauliflower, broccoli. Not the top leeks, they'll go in. Uh, those onions can stay for a bit longer. But the war against slugs is still going on. I haven't won yet, but I'm not giving up. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. If you, uh, if you like these videos, why not try subscribing uh, down below? Just click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and click all and you'll be notified whenever I put a video up. But that's it for now, so take care, and I will see you next month.